November 16, 2023. This is the S&P 500 E-Futures Mini on the 2000 tick chart on the Ninja Trader 8 platform. This is how I saw the charts today. There's only one piece of economic data that came out, which was around 530, which is about right here where my cursor is. It was the unemployment claims. They come out every Thursday. It didn't really move the markets overall. Price action kind of stayed when this gigantic, well, uh, gigantic is a relative term, but stayed within this range from about 45.07 roughly to about 45.22. So maybe about 14 points, but the total range, total span of price action was about 25 points from uh, 45.01 to 45.26. So it was pretty choppy today. There was some big swings. Well, relative to the size of the range, there's some big swings and I couldn't find too many good setups. And I only managed one trade today. So I'm going to get into the price action today and kind of describe what I saw. Go down in the descriptions below and you don't have to listen to me yap away. You can probably just go find timestamp where I thought I saw setups. This is what the pre-market looked like. And in the pre-market, I was when I saw this, I was thinking, OK, looks like we're in a range. The thing I don't like about this range was that it's making higher lows every time and higher highs so it looks like it's kind of a bullish biased starting to trend upwards range so i did see one measured move then it was like two legs pulling back and then another measured move but there was no trades for me to take because this is the pre-market where i don't trade and so then prices opened i drew the highs and the lows of the <clears throat> pre-market highs and lows and so upon opening so you actually don't have any good setup here. You do have a first entry long here, pulls up. So it's like a really big leg down, pulls up. Right here, technically you have a second entry long, but this is a bad signal bar. So nothing tells me that I should have a trade ready. It's also in the middle of this range. It looks like it's in a sub range, right, right, uh, sub like smaller range right now. It had a triple test here, but unfortunately there was no setup to feel confident, confident in taking. You do technically have a new, Second entry long here, it's a new high. First entry long, second entry long. But this is the inside bar to this previous red bar. So I didn't feel that good about it. I also didn't have this yellow channel drawn yet. Prices then continue moving up, consolidates, pushes up. It hits the top here. It breaks through. I'm thinking there might be a fail breakout, might pull back into range. And the best fit I could do was with this yellow channel going up. Unfortunately, I don't see any good trades. Drops around, breaks through, breaks decisively down through the EMA, and now it looks like it's entering back into this pre-market range. But then it reverses and comes back up. It almost hits the top, but doesn't. So I was looking if there was some kind of like second entry long or failed second entry long, second entry short. I didn't see anything. The first setup I saw was actually this one. I saw a new high, first entry long, pull back. Right here, this confirms your second entry long, but this is a terrible second entry long because it's below the EMA. It's a terrible signal bar. And this is the first break of this green channel. So it already made one attempt back down and tested the range, but it just doesn't feel quite right. So it is the break of this yellow channel. It already made one attempt up. You could argue that there's going to try to make a second attempt up because it didn't reach the highs here. But confirm so far you have like a second entry long, but there's a bad signal bar. Then it fails. So now you have failed second entry long. The thing I don't like about this failed second entry long is I wanted it to reject off the EMA and it already made one push up. So it's trying to test this high. It made a second attempt to try to test this high. So it looked like it pushed up once, pushed up twice, and it failed. So confirm the failed second entry long. What makes me think of going short? Well, nothing really because it didn't bounce off the EMA and the signal bar was too bullish. So here I was waiting. And when by the time this formed, it looked like the trade is already made. So I had to just wait. Moves up. And this is where I actually my, took my one and only trade. It's a lower high. So it's a new high, first entry long, second entry long failure. It was also a lower high that didn't break above here. And what I liked about this trade was it looked like it went up one tick to trap anybody that decided to go long because maybe they're thinking first entry long, second entry long failure, but then it looks like it's making another push because you could argue that the downtrend of this green channel might have played out now because it made broke out, touched once, it definitely tried a second time, and maybe it's going to reverse and test the highs of this. 
but I didn't think so. I also thought that it's probably at the top of the bot at the top of this trading range from the pre-market, which gives me more more ammunition to think to go short. So I entered one tick technically below this signal bar, but it's at the lows of this signal bar. It's hard to see, but there's a little purple arrow right here, purple triangle. That's where I entered, and I knew I was going to push it a little bit further past the lows of this, and I was okay with that because I felt like it was coming back down. I was rejecting off the EMA. So I did like this engulfing candle. Then prices continue moving down. It just went for a quick one-point scalp. It falls into this channel, and I'm thinking, okay, there's looks like there's one. First, I thought there was two legs, one leg down, second leg, and then I saw this one big leg. Pulls back up, and I do see a second entry short right here. It's a new low. It's a first entry short back second entry short now the second entry short i think was a possible trade but i didn't recognize it in time as well as i wasn't 100 percent sure that the top of this trading range was going to be strong enough to push prices down because it broke out of this green channel it tested the highs and you would think okay now it's going to come back down because it is at the top of the range but i didn't kind of process all this in real time fast enough because it is a break of this green channel and now it's also a decent signal bar with enough room to hit the EMA if I was worried about the EMA. But I saw this, I wasn't sure. It started to move about me and I said, I'll just wait for a lower high confirmation. The lower high never shows up. And once it breaks through here, then it for sure is trending down. But now I felt like if I tried to chase this trade, putting it up here is unrealistic because you're asking the prices to come all the way back up, recover it, pick me up and then come back down. So the only option would have been to take it one tick below here. But then I wasn't sure if this is going to act as resistance. Turns out the trade worked out well, but I wasn't on it. I also saw this. Uh, I didn't think there's a trade here, but I just see this as a new high. It's a first entry long. On this red candle, it pulls back and pushes right back up. So it's actually comes down first entry long when it breaks above the sky, comes back down, opens below, goes down, and breaks above. So this is actually a hidden second entry long. I just like to kind of point these out for myself. Even though there's a no, no real trade here, I just like to know and kind of see it in real time and mark it for myself. So in the future, when I review it, I'll just kind of be more aware of this because if there was a more clean setup, then this might have been a potential trade to take. Then prices continue moving. They chop. It's staying below the EMA. You have a new low here, first entry short. Technically, you have a second entry short here, but it's a bad signal bar. Nothing tells me to go short or feel safe about going short. Technically, you could say there was a, maybe a range here. But it's not a very clean range to even trust at that point. Prices continue moving down. So here, once I saw this, and then I saw this one, I was thinking, I was questioning the low of the pre-market, if that was actually where the whole range was, or could there potentially be kind of the range might be actually right here. So I drew this blue line because it looked like it touched nicely once, twice, three times. Uh, you can argue for a fourth. And so when I saw this, I saw it's like new low, new high, first entry long, pull back, and then it bounced off and it creates a second entry long. But I didn't feel that comfortable about it because even though it's bouncing off this potential support and potential bottom of the range, if I counted it where the blue is, I wasn't really sure because it looks like it didn't have enough push and oomph. And the EMA is kind of starting to trend down. But it was definitely maybe something to consider, but I didn't think it was a worthwhile trade to even think about. And there was no real room to scalp out before you hit the EMA. Turns out it would have worked, but I don't I don't think this is the type of setup to hang my hat on and always, you know, be on the lookout for because it just wasn't good enough. Then prices break through. So I did see this, hard to see here, but I saw this new high, first entry long, second entry long, and it's a fail breakout. So here it's a fail, potential fail breakout of this pre-market range. Now, when it broke out and you're Right here, you don't have your second entry long here yet, and it closed right at the pre market lows. So, had this actually just ticked one tick above, showed me a little bit more, then I would have felt a little more confident taking this trade. But this might have been good enough for other people to just quickly jump on it and at least ride it back up. And again, I was questioning whether this was a potential bottom of the range. So, if, would it run into resistance here? So, considering all that, I really wasn't sure. So, I just decided to wait for a higher low confirmation. Looks like the trade would have worked though. And I'm not sitting here, I'm waiting for my higher low. There is no higher low and never makes a higher low for me to try to jump on it. The prices just continue moving down. 
hops around, falls into what I believe is this trading range, but there's no clear setup. Hops around some more. It kind of looks like it's breaking out of this yellow trend channel. It plays with the potential that this could be the bottom of the range and that this is the bottom of the pre-market. It looks a little confusing right now, so I'm not sure. So I'm just sitting on my hands. This gets very noisy. You could find second entries, but they're not necessarily good entries or high probability because you got these big, big tails. And it just looks very congested. Look at these guys are side by side. You got dojis kind of everywhere. This is just noisy. It's just very, very spiky and pointy. So I just want to kind of stay away from stuff like that because it feels like it could fall into a trap. And so then prices continue moving up. <clears throat> and this is actually where I see like the first potential trap. I see a new low here, excuse me, new high here. It's so first entry long pullback second entry long so it creates a second entry long but this is not a good signal bar it's also below the ema which i don't really like it broke out of this green channel as an overshoot so you don't know if this is actually going to correct back in or the overshoot is going to continue so you wait so that's what i did and i saw this higher low breaks one tick down and then flashes all the way back up but it doesn't enter the green channel so this is actually you know engulfs this candle and I could see and understand if I decided to take this trade, but I think I was just kind of asleep at the wheel. If I was more in tune, I think I probably would have been trapped by this because I probably would have seen this and said, like, well, obviously there's a higher low. It's coming up above. It's confirming a kind of a sketchy second entry long. You don't really know that this overshot's been played, overshoot's been played out. And so I think I probably would have entered probably one tick above, gotten in, maybe gotten filled. But if you <clears throat> entered at the top here, then I think you might have gotten trapped. So it was a little bit sketchy because it looks like it's trapping short sellers by moving one tick below. The failed second entry long because it's from here, first entry long, second entry long, technically of a failure here by moving one tick below, but then it flashes back up. So if you went short here, thinking the EMA is pushing you back down, then you would have gotten trapped by going short and probably got stopped out. And then here's the second trap that I saw. So there's a new low here, first entry short, second entry short. The thing with the second entry short is you see the second entry short, you probably would have taken one tick below, but it looks like it flashed back up and trapped you. Because if you were thinking go short, because you're thinking, you know, this is a resistance, it might be pushing back down, then I could see this trapping you uh, kind of like a double trap. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it was like first entry short, second entry short. It looks like it failed and it came back down. Uh, let me just re-explain uh, that for myself. Just so if I'm watching this again, I know exactly what I was thinking. So you have a new low here. It's a first entry short, second entry short. The second entry short is a good signal bar for second entry short. It closed right at the EMA. Ideally, it would have closed below the EMA. So if you decided to go short by one tick, you would have gotten filled. It would have flashed up and taken you out because you're thinking, okay, it's a second entry short, but it turns out to be a failed second entry short. But as it flashes up, you're thinking, okay, maybe it's going to go bullish. So you're thinking failed second entry short. I'm going to enter one tick above here or even one tick above this red one. It looks like it would have filled you potentially on both instances then flashed back down. So if you went long on the failed second entry short, it looks like it would have tricked you and failed on you. The prices continue moving. It falls into this red channel coming down, or I think this is red channel, but I actually had it as a red trend line, and I wasn't too strongly believing that the channel is actually down to here. I actually saw this as a new low. It's a first entry short, pull back. This is a second entry short, but this isn't a very good signal bar to even have the idea of getting a uh, trade ready. So even though the second entry short kind of forms, it felt like, okay, now it broke down below. If I put it right here, I might be chasing the trade just slightly. So I decided, you know, I was just going to leave it alone. However, you do have a new high here. It's a first entry long pullback, second entry long failure. And I also saw this as a new low, first entry short, second entry short, created a higher, a lower high, and it's bounced and rejected off this EMA. So it looked like it tried to push back up and it failed. So here, I don't know, I think it's a possible trade, but I don't know if I would have taken this trade because I wasn't sure if, you know, it's going to find some kind of support here. There is enough room down to the lows here 
So to put it one tick below, I feel is a little risky. Maybe I would have put it one tick below this candle. Ideally, this candle would have been red too, to make me feel a little more comfortable. It looks like either way it would have worked, but I, to be honest, didn't kind of see this clearly in real time. It looks like it would have worked, it comes down. It has a small overshoot in the red channel, kind of creates a first entry short, second entry short, failure, but it's not very clean. Projecting by this red channel coming down. And so now it kind of swings upwards. So I'm thinking maybe there's this trend line, which is drawn by this purple, and it's bouncing off this blue line that I wasn't sure if it was the bottom of my range as opposed to the pre-market low. So it was a little confusing here. Price is starting to move up, falls into this yellow channel going up, comes back down, tests it. So now I'm pretty confident that this bottom purple trend line is good. I'm not too sure about the top yet because it could have been slightly lower and this could have been an overshoot. I wasn't 100% sure, but once it bounced off and went upwards, and I figured this overshoot probably could have been captured by the top of this range, pop top of this channel. Drops around. I don't see anything that I really like. Candles are just two side by side, and this is just a two, two and a half to three point range. And then it kind of starts moving up. It gets very, very congested. I don't see anything very good, very, you know, safe. But I do see this setup, and unfortunately, it's too late in the day. So this is a double top. So you restart the count. It's a new high. It's a first entry long pullback. It's bouncing off the bottom of this purple trend line, which I like. And it closed nice and bullish. And there's enough room to the highs. So I would have taken this trade. Unfortunately, it's right at the last couple of minutes of the regular trading hour. So it's very risky. And I didn't want to. I mean, it's a good trade, but I just felt it's just too late in the day to try to take this. It kind of ends up working and it closes into the after hours. So this is kind of a uh, pretty choppy day, similar, well, not exactly like yesterday, but it felt uh, in my mind similar to yesterday. The trading, was, the difficulty of trading was kind of roughly the same. It was some traps. It was a little choppy. There wasn't too many setups that I could find. And I missed out, I think, on two good setups. Then fortunately, because I, I don't think I recognized it in real time. So hopefully that was helpful.